and welcome back to day two of the planning live training. So last day I left you with a bit of homework and that was to find a planning system that is right for you. If you have found that, please feel free to leave the name or a photo or whatever in the comments of this video. And if you want some help, go ahead and leave the question there too. So I know time is valuable and I'm going to get right to it. And today we're talking about something that actually has to do with planning, but when I start, you might not believe me. This thing is so, so, so important and it is your focus. So what does your focus have to do with planning? Well, when we want to learn what someone's using or what we're seeing, you'll notice I just asked you to go ahead and share the name and a photo. This is really valuable for people who are looking for something. So when you're looking for a planner or anything, it's really great if you can see the inside of the planner, the outside, you can check out how it's laid out and you get to ask the persons a few questions. So what do they like about this planner? What do they hate? How are they using it? But there's also a downfall. The downfall is, is that you're starting to look at the planner. You may start to notice things like what they're doing in their homeschool, what they're doing in their life, and you can get distracted. You can also fall into a trap and it's a trap that all of us know is a trap. And yet we often fall into it anyways, and that's comparing. So the downside of doing this when you're dealing with your planner, is that when you start comparing your life, your homeschool, all of that to other people, you start to try to copy them or you might even feel pressure to add more activities or um, a certain lifestyle to your life. So your life is already full. You have your work, your homeschool, your life, and we talked a bit about that yesterday. But what happens is when you start getting distracted, uh, some people call it the shiny object syndrome, um, if you get mentally distracted, you're trying to figure out how can I do that too? Or why doesn't that work in my homeschool? Which can make us feel awful about our life and discontentment. And those are things that we don't need. Um, so I'll be sharing a resource with you in the comments of this video or in the description about three ways that we can help, you know, redirect our focus to what is working for us and really bring joy back into our life. In the meantime, though, it is important to realize that it is a trap and it is out there. And so we need to stop looking at what other people are doing with that type of intent or viewpoint. Instead, there are three things that we want to consider when we look at reviews or when we're looking at people's planners or their Instagram feed or their Facebook feed or whatever we're looking at is one is to realize that it can inspire us. It's like, wow, okay, so that's how they fit everything in or that's how they're doing this. So if they can do it, I can do it too. Okay. The second thing is again, to remind us that we can do it, that everything can fit in, but our life and our schedule and our layout and how they did it can be completely unique to us. It can fit our lifestyle on our kids. So it gives us a few different ideas. And it's one of the things that I really, really love about looking at how others are making their planning systems or their homeschool work for them. Uh, the day in the life posts are really encouraging to me. But again, you want to be really careful to remember that works for other people may not work for you and comparing you and your way of doing things to other people is really a trap. And so we want to focus on the third thing is that maybe it'll spark an idea for us. So when you're looking at the way other people have things set up, we can get some really great ideas, especially if you're a lot like me, I'm not creative. I struggle to think outside the box. Um, and so until I see the way other people are doing, I'm like, oh, okay. And that gives me great ideas. So those are the things that I want you to think about when you're looking at other people's, not just their planners, but even if you're going through, you know, um, you're reading or you're watching other people, the way that they have their lives organized, just remember that to be inspired, to be encouraged and maybe get a few ideas and to realize that you can do it, but it doesn't have to look anything like theirs. And it shouldn't because we're all unique. So my life and my schedule is going to look completely different from yours and it should. 
Okay, so today I wanted to share with you the three-part formula, and I'm just going to share with you what it is and kind of how it works. And then next week, in the next video, we'll talk about the very first one. We're gonna break it down. I'll give you some examples. If you've joined the free e-course called How to Tame Your Hectic Life and Get Things Done, you'll have uh, printable worksheets in there. And I think I only have the one that, oh, yep, it'll look like this. So the three sections are fixed, flexible, and you. Now, I know that doesn't seem earth shattering. It's really simple. And that's the beauty of it is that it is so simple and so customizable that it can work for anybody. And knowing the three sections is not enough because I can share this with you. This is the free printable you would get in a course. If you haven't signed up for it, grab a piece of paper, grab a notebook, grab an app, you know, Evernote, Asana, Trello, a notebook, a piece of paper, whatever, you want to divide it into three sections. So you want fixed, flexible, and you. And you also probably, if you're a writer, you're using paper, you're going to want pens or pencils, colored pencils, writing instruments in at least three colors. So I use these. These are my absolute favorite. And so I just picked three colors. And I will admit that um, sometimes I don't have the right pen on me when I'm filling in my planner. So this three colors do not have to match your planner, whatever you're actually gonna put in your planner. So for the next three days, we're not going to be touching our planner. You will need though the schedules that I mentioned yesterday, um, or sorry, in the last video, and all the other list of things that I gave you. So if you missed that, please go back and watch day one so you have an idea of what we're going to be using. And um, we're going to dig into that in the next video. So your homework for today is to make sure you have that planning system picked out to get a sheet of paper or an app or a digital thing that will help you brainstorm. Go ahead and download the worksheets. There are also a worksheet you can do right online. You can fill it in. Um, so make sure that's ready. Make sure you have all your schedules and we're going to dig in deep into fixed items. What are they? How can we make them work for us? What am I trying to get at? I promise it's simple and easy. And I'll leave you that link to um, when you're looking at other people's things, how to be encouraged instead of falling into the comparison trap. Okay, and don't forget, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will see you next week. Have a good day.